Hello everyone, my name is Spectre, and I'm happy to be sharing my first Final Fantasy XIV video with you all. Here, I'll actually be explaining the mechanics for hunts, the large monsters you might have seen out and about in the overworld. This video will focus on the a rank hunts of the newest expansion, Shadowbringers. That being said, if you haven't completed the current story, I'd suggest you come back and watch this another time, as there will be some spoilery locations in the video. Other than that, I'll dive right in. Since we already took a look at her, we'll start off with the a rank Nerifon, who you most likely recognize as the boss from St. Buckian's Arboretum. I'd like to start off to say that the majority of hunt mobs that are pulled from dungeons do maintain most of their mechanics from that dungeon as a result, which we'll see as we we'll move further along. On a scale of 1-3 to three stars, I'd give Nerifon about a 2, if only that it's important that you actually pay attention to this hunt. The most important mechanic to focus with Nerifon is to realize which way she's facing, and as long as you're not in front of her, you'll be fine. One attack Nerifon does is called Vine Hammer. As you can see here, it has no cast bar and chooses targets at random. It is merely a damaging attack that is only lethal if your health is low. Heal is necessary. One move you should become familiar with is Allergen Injection. It is a circular AoE that follows a chosen player and applies a magical defense down debuff to all inside. Like most defense down debuffs, it's okay to get hit by it once, but it'll hurt if you get hit by it again while you still have the debuff. If you're the one targeted, try to move it far from the party and the hunt itself, as this debuff cannot be cleansed with Asuna. Roots of Atopy is a stack marker where players must stack on the player with the marker in order to spread out the damage. Do not stack if you have Piercing Resistance Down debuff, or else you might die. Odious Miasma has a cast bar, but no Telegraph marker, meaning you will have to watch where Neri Fawn is facing, as I had said earlier. Once done casting, she spews Green Bile, and if you are directly in front of her, you will get nearly every debuff under the sun and your healers will hate you. She will choose a direction to spit in at random, so make sure you're paying attention. Overall, Nerifon is fairly easy, as long as you're not mindlessly throwing yourself at it. Let's move on to Lakeland's next A rank, Knuckle Labby. You'll most likely recognize Knuckle Labby as the first boss from the drowned city of Scala, and even more recently, as a trash mob in Dong Meg. However, its moves hail from its boss origins, which you might find familiar. I put Knuckle Labby as a one-star hunt, and that you only kinda need to pay attention to what it's doing. First off, Nakalabi does have a tank buster and it's called Torpedo. Use your cooldowns and self-healing as necessary. It is single target, so don't worry about getting cleaved. Bog Body is another circular AoE that will damage all inside and also apply a cleansable bleed debuff. Make sure to move it away from the hunt to reduce the amount of people hit. Gallop has a cast bar where Nakalabi will target a random player and dash at them. The dash itself does not hurt, but the AoE afterwards does. It has no telegraph, so you'll want to make sure if Knuckle dashes near you to get out of its immediate range. Other than that, it's rinse and repeat, and we can move on to Pelusia where we can talk about Lil Murderer. Lil Murderer is a large goblin unmasked, the first goblin we've seen without its mask to my knowledge. He is also the first hunt that talks to us, asking for us not to eat him. Strangely enough, he only does his full rotation when in a crowd, and not when you have two people around. I'd give him about a 1 star in terms of difficulty. As long as you stay out of his way, he's easy to kill. One of Little Murderer's main attacks is Gob Thunder 3. This attack can be interrupted by using Interject, which silences the target. Otherwise, it does serious damage onto the marked player and everyone around them in an AoE. It also applies a Lightning Resistance Down debuff, so don't get cheeky and try to tank more than one. He also has a tank buster called Goblin Punch that will hit you three times. Use cooldowns as necessary. Gob Thunder 2 is a simple telegraphed AoE on the ground. However, as I said before, he only does his full rotation in a crowd, so most often not only will he target a random player, usually the one furthest away, he will cast it near that player he ran to. This is where ranged players will want to pay attention and avoid getting hit. Immediately after, he usually uses Goblin Slash, which has no telegraph, so you don't want to move back into melee range immediately. One way to remember is to look for him as he'll say, this is how I die, which is strange considering his name. 
Keep a lookout as well for his gob haste cast, as that will grant him haste, making him cast faster. Other than that, Lil Murderer is easy to take down. Next up, we have Hurricane, who is possibly the most typical out of all the hunts to kill. You'll recognize him as a palette swap of Altroit, the first boss from the Omega Raids. His difficulty comes from the you really need to be paying attention to where he is facing, otherwise there will be a lot of death making this danger noodle a 3 star hunt. The main attack you want to watch out for is called Spring Breeze. It is an attack that deals high damage both in front of and behind him. The part that gives many hunters trouble is most often he does not always cast this attack, meaning you will always have to make sure you are positioned as best as possible. Of course, you can only do your best, as tanks can spin the boss in the fight for aggro. When he does cast it, he will choose a player at random, giving you time to adjust and move. Otherwise, make sure you are on the sides of this boss as much as possible. Alongside of dealing heavy damage, it also applies a wind burn debuff that, while cleansable, still does decent damage, so as soon as soon as you can. Autumn Wreath is a donut AoE that is telegraphed on the ground. Simply move in or move out to dodge this attack. Winter Rain is a ground AoE on a random player. Simply move out of the way. Summer Heat is a simple raid-wide attack that will hit anyone within range. Heal is necessary. Dawn's Edge is a frontal tank buster that will hit anyone within range. Make sure you're not too close if you're not a tank. Hurricane definitely provides the challenge that hunters are looking for, so long as you are paying attention. Be ready to pick up the less experienced members of your party off the ground, as it will take some practice to not die to the Sunset Snake. Moving on to Amarang, we'll take a look at Shugar, a mob you're sure to have seen many times before, just smaller. I put Shugar at 2 star difficulty, mostly that for range, she's not a huge problem, but for melee, you'll have to put some work in. For Shugar, you'll always want to watch her cast bars, as it's key to your survival. The easiest to dodge is Body Slam, a circular AoE around the hunt. It has no telegraph, and if you get hit, you will gain a stack of vulnerability, or bone up for short. You'll want to become familiar with Numbing Noise and Tail Snap. Tail Snap is a backwards attack with no telegraph behind the boss, while Numbing Noise is a frontal attack. Easy enough until Shugar casts them in its spinning arrows. Once the cast is done, she will pull you in, and begin to cast the chosen attack three times while spinning either clockwise or counterclockwise. Make sure you pay attention to which attack was cast so you can avoid being hit. Depending on the amount of people around, range might not get sucked in, meaning you can hit the hunt in peace. Still, make sure you're not within range, as they do hurt, and all of Shigar's attacks will apply vulnups if you do get hit. Last for this video is the tenderest of Maliks, Malik Tinder. Malik Tinder is a large cactuar like Hunt of the First, but even he still acts like his brethren of the Source. I'd give Malik Tinder a solid 3 stars, as this is a hunt that everyone has to pay attention to, no matter your class. Malik Tinder's difficulty doesn't really come from the attacks itself, but much like Hurricane, making sure you're not positioned to get hit by them. The first thing you want to watch for is Sato Tindance, a circular attack that causes knockback and also stuns anyone who's hit. Getting hit also determines his next attack, 50,000 Needles, a frontal attack where he shoots needles. This attack does hurt, and he usually focuses wherever the most stunned people are, as they won't be able to move out of the way. What you absolutely want to watch out for is when he uses haste. This will make his attacks cast faster, and he will move faster as well. Malik Tinder likes to run to a player who is far away, and will usually cast Sabo Tin Dance, which stuns as usual. However, after casting haste, his next attack becomes 90,000 needles, which does lethal damage should you get hit. As far as I know, you don't get to flex tank privilege with this attack, at least not without using an invulnerable ability such as Living Dead. Simply make sure you're out of his way should he come marching toward you, and always pay attention to where he's facing. That'll be all for this video. If you have any more questions, simply leave them in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed, and if you have any other info that you'd like to see in the next video about the remaining hunts, you can leave those in the comments section too. In the meantime and in between time, this has been Spectre, and I'll see you in the next video.